back out here working on this uh, little gray car, the OGR. And this is going to be a little bit different of a video. This one is going to span over the next few days as we put this car the rest of the way together and finish it out. We don't like much. As you can see, Axel is getting these wheels ready to paint. Doing a good job. And over here, I've started working on the windows. Well, the tracks anyway. These pieces here got to be cleaned up. This one here looks pretty good. So I've got to get all those cleaned. The glass is over here in this box. And once I get those tracks cleaned, we're going to glue that glass in. And I'm going to use contact cement. I've used this before on my Cadillac. worked really good. Um, just stuff from Lowe's right here. You can see it. It's pretty good stuff. It, I've not ever had an issue out of that passenger window in my Cadillac since I put that on there and glued it in. So that is what we're doing there. As uh, far as things to finish up on this car over the next few days, <clears throat> we've got to put the wheels on it, get those painted, put the wheels on. I've got to paint the back bumper, which I intend to do probably this afternoon. The interior's got to go back in. Miss A's going to come out and help us with the carpet probably tomorrow so we'll glue the carpet in hopefully be ready to put the windows in tomorrow so we've got to put the tires on it paint the back bumper paint the rims put the glass in and put all the interior in that's pretty much the gist of it we got to make a pan right here to go between the bumper and the car a splash pan to match the back that will have to be made so we have to do that and then basically maybe a little bit of cleanup under the hood and some touch-up paint we got to do that and polish this chrome up got to do that other than that she's done so like I said we're going to make this video over the series of two three days or so as we finish the OGR original gangster rod out get it done gotta go we got bronco parts here and we are ready to move on the bronco so come along with us hope you like the video uh hope you hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button if you hadn't helps us a lot and uh yeah just tag along with us for the next couple of days and let's see if we can't get this from the garage to the road well let's see from the junkyard to the garage to the road so here we go we're not going to get it done gavin so let's get with it i know axel's already getting with it over there knocking those wheels out got him chair set up and everything so what i'm doing now is the pieces that the glass actually glues into that's my main focus right now is to get these clean and you can see that one's pretty clean in there i'm just using a wire wheel I've got three more to do. Right here's the other two. I've already cleaned these, I believe. Yeah, these right here are clean. They're ready. So I'm gonna get the glass out and start preparing it. Well, here we go. First problem of the afternoon. Got the glass open. And guess what? it is not right as you can see this sharp angle right here that glass won't work so notice there was a packing slip in there so i called those people and uh they're going to help us out on getting the right glass so that's good hopefully that works out and we can get that glass in here in the next week or so but hey we got plenty of work to do so we'll back up and punt on the glass 
and move forward with everything else. It's all good. As far as moving forward with everything else, Axel's got two of the wheels now sanded and have the first coat, tack coat on this wheel. And you can see, you know, I didn't, I got a pretty good coat on it, but it's not completely covered. That's just the first coat. This wheel here, I have my second coat on and it looks much better. Now, obviously, you know, it'll flatten out a little bit, you know, when it dries. This is semi-gloss. It's not gloss. So, as it dries, you know, it'll flatten out. Is what it is. So, moving forward. Back here, on the rear of the car, we're going to paint this bumper black to match the front bumper. And, as you can see, it's sanded. We just need to tape it off. And, you know, I was saying we need to do some touching up paint. I'm going to have to take these bezels off and clean those. And uh, re-black that rubber. Get the paint off of those little pieces there. And get that took care of. Well, we've got that coat of paint on the bumper now. That bumper is rough, but it turned out pretty good. And, I mean, this will... This will flash off, dry, and it'll flatten. But this bumper, it looks a lot better on this camera than it kind of does in real life. I mean, it looks it looks really good, but it's just not completely smooth. But, I mean, that's these old bumpers. Um, they're just the way they are. And it's all fine and good. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to look decent for a rat rod. We're going to let it flash off and dry. And Mr. Axel just finishing the, taping up the last wheel over there. And here's one of the wheels. We got those wheels painted. Got that bumper painted last night. Wheels turned out really good. So now that the wheels are painted, I've got the caps now for them. Pick those up at swap meet on the cheap. And this is what we're thinking about running right here on the car. So we're going to try to go ahead and get the wheels on the car. And Miss Amanda is going to work on the carpet. And here's the bumper after it's dried up. Looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that. I like the black on this gray. It looks good so that's what we're going to be doing now she's going to start working on that and I've got some lowering blocks for the back and I'm going to start working on that and we'll just cut in and show you some of the carpet she's doing on the inside and some of the suspension work I'm doing on the back side because as soon as I get those blocks in we put the wheels on boom right back down on the ground then we can really see what this thing's gonna look like i'm super excited so let's get on that and get it done now here's the bottom of the car now, you can see, we've got that block in there. What we run into here, this is very primitive, it's old stuff. So, you know where your U-bolts would normally be. These are the original U-bolts, and that's how they're held on, no bottom plate. So what we're doing now is we are fabricating a bottom plate at a quarter inch plate steel to put on the bottom of there so we can mount our up-to-date U-bolt. Let me see it now, like that. 
we go, we both go this way. There's a head go in the front on that. So I'm right. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. Where'd it go to? Right here it is. No, that's the wrong one. Oh, it's the other side. Right there it is. Okay. Yep, I weld her up. Yep. Now let's see here. Uh. Said burn her in there. In. Put a snake's belly on that. Need to get a cool off a little bit. <laughs> well, Bubba's putting that last wheel on now. Then we're going to set the hood down. So I picked up those centers at the uh, swap meet. It looks pretty good on there. Lower in the rear of that car, static drop of blocks turned into be a big headache. I mean, it wasn't bad, it's just having to make those brackets, that was uh, time consuming. You know, it took a couple of hours. But now that we have that done and the rear end back together, we've already lowered the front end. And I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But let's go ahead now, get this thing back on the ground and get the hood closed and we'll take a look at it, talk about it a little bit. All right, here we go. We got her back down on the ground. And she is a lot lower now than she was. Dog dishes look good on the black wheels with the gray. Bubba's checking measurements now. We think that the front end is a little bit higher. You may have to go in there and do a little something about that. You are, you're sitting about an inch and a half. Higher in the front? Higher, higher in the rear. Higher in the rear? Yeah. I measured right here at the bottom of this fender. Go to the, go to the wheel well. Top of the wheel well. Because I swear it looks like it is sagging in the rear. Just a hair on the tip of it there. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're sitting about an inch higher in the rear. In the rear? In the rear. Maybe it's my so, eyes playing tricks on me. Well it's hard to say because the wheel wells are different. Right. In the front, you got more of an oval. In the rear, you got more of a circle. We need to go to the frame. But right here, I mean, looking down that body line, it looks level. Yeah. But when you're standing up over it, it looks like it's riding high. But she is definitely a lot lower than it was. I mean, that I, looks good. I mean, did how I many did you drop in the front two? Two. And you done three in the rear? Yeah. So technically that should be right. Yeah. But, you know. And we dropped on tire size too. We went from a seventy to a sixty five. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the S ten dog dishes on there. Right, so they look good. And is that what they come off of with S ten? Yeah, they were eighty eighty two through ninety nine. But when you look them up, they say 2 through 99, but they, you really didn't see them anymore yeah. after 1990, really. They come on S10s, uh, GMCs, and Astro Land. Pretty good looking pleats with that. That did turn out to be more of a little headache than originally anticipated. But that is done now. Check that off the list. Miss Amanda got the seats cleaned up. I'd originally thought about dyeing these seats and she is telling me no, that they're not worth it. Because the ends on these seats are kind of rough. But overall, the seat does look okay. Um, right here. Yeah, right here is what she's saying where it's tore right there. So I don't know where we'll go with that. We'll 
do what we can. So now we have the touch-up paint done. And uh, I'll show you some of that. Miss Amanda came out and she done our cap for the gas. And she done the black around the taillights. So I'll put the taillights back in tomorrow. And now it's time to put the interior in which we will be working on that tomorrow um make a video on that we're going to do the carpet she wanted the car off jack stand before she put the carpet in so went ahead and lowered the rear turned in i thought would be a 30 minute job always takes two hours so that's where we're at so when we come back it will be day three of final assembly we have the car back on its wheels we can put the carpet in and the seats put the dash back together got to do that clean the windows we'll go ahead and get all those window pieces ready because I, I told you about that dilemma with the windows coming they were not the right door glass so uh contacted those people there's an invoice on the box and talk to them for a good long while and they're going to uh let me send them that glass and they're going to send me the right door glasses however that will you know hold us up for a couple weeks on the glass but it's okay the rest of the car can be done and uh when that glass comes in you know yeah we can put it in this car will be finished the big ticket items today is the interior to get it in i said yesterday that we would talk a little bit about the way this car is lowered because this is not the ideal way that i typically lower cars typically i do blocks in the rear uh you know for leaf spring trucks and stuff like that or you know airbag uh this car does have blocks in the rear we had to fabricate those brackets we've already talked enough about that but the way that the front is lowered on this car and now you can see she sits pretty low in the front i did not cut those springs i actually heated those springs now saying that i'll say this when you heat springs you weaken that metal i have heated springs before in the past years ago this first one I've done in a very long time. It's been years. And I've done that just because of the elaborate shock system that's on this car. It's not like the shock system I've ever seen before. It sits on top of the A-arm. Kind of looks like the head on a uh, Briggs & Stratton engine is the best way I can describe the way these shocks look. Uh, they have uh, bolt-in type bushings. Huge, huge undertaking to get these out to take these shocks and these a-arms and get the spring out so on just this particular little rat rod i decided that we would heat them a couple of things about that when you heat springs know this they do have potential to crack or break i've never had that happen i've never seen that happen but i have heard that and heard that and heard that and heard that so also when you heat springs, it makes the ride rough. I wouldn't say it, it makes it as rough as it just makes it very bouncy the lower you go. I have heated springs in the past. I've not ever had an issue with it other than a bouncy ride. Uh, just for this car, I just, you know, I said, well, I don't want to get into that because this being so old, if something in that shock system goes wrong when you're disassembling it, parts can be extremely hard to find and i said i'm just going to heat them on this one i'm going to heat them so that's what we did and that's where we're at if something happens to the spring then i'll deal with it i'll pull them out replace them or whatever uh get a smaller spring or cut the, the new ones so enough about that cutting the door panels out show you the sheeting. This sheeting is a plastic. 
this stuff can get wet and it don't swell and it's, it's real dense it's but it's easy to cut with a razor blade you can see ted there cutting out the holes for the windows now we're using the trash bag interior for our templates but i think that he's on to something with this right here it's a lot easier to work with with the wood the wood works and it works great but this stuff right here seems to work real good too but it's just a lot easier to cut drill and put on the door and it's really lightweight and probably pretty soundproof ain't it it does help yeah so i think it's gonna work out good and probably going to use this same stuff in the in the wagon when we do the interior in it because it's slick this has got a both sides are kind of slick and it's kind of got this corrugated in the center to hold its shape and this pretty good stuff i i think this is going to be the way to go from here on out so we're going to get the rest of these cut out and put on then we'll come back and put it on camera and let y'all see what they look like on the car before miss amanda wraps them all right, we got the back panels done. We just got a couple of screws. Just kind of got this one mocked up and screwed on so we can make sure all our gaps are good. But you can see that's going to work out really good. And these are ultra lightweight too. So that, that always helps when this stuff is lightweight. I mean, the wood is lightweight too, but I'm telling you, after working with this stuff right here, I'm telling you, I think this is the way to go. And it looks looks real good on there. Once that's covered with some fabric, shoot. That's going to be next to perfect. That's going to be better in factory. They use that cardboard stuff in factory. You know, yeah, and that is actually the same thickness as the factory cardboard. Right, and you heard it here first. Those door handles fit right too. That looks, that looks real good. We've got, we've got to make the front two doors now and then a couple of uh side pillar pieces we'll cut a back shelf and then all this will be ready to go get wrapped so we're getting getting close with this thing now Real having, close. A ball. having a ball having a good time out here in the morning it's not too hot we've had coffee having some good conversation and having a good time with this so I hope you learned something from this or pick up an ideal or two because you might be wondering, you know, might be contemplating wood, you might be contemplating other ideals, but, you know, really think about this corrugated plastic stuff. And I mean, you can probably pick this up just about anywhere, you know, any of these, um, the, where are them like Knoxville Salvage? Yeah. Salvage lumber and building material places, you can find this stuff. And, this, this is a really good way to go if, if you're thinking about doing it. But we'll get these front two door panels made and then cut our side pillars. And that's where we're going next. All right, we got these front doors done. Right here is the driver's panel. And Mr. Ted is marking up the passenger panel. So we can call this done and move on to the kick panels, those side pillar pieces there, and that back shelf. You can see how nasty that trunk is. I need to get in there and clean that out. But in time. In time. But we made a lot of progress. Well, big thanks to Mr. Ted for coming over and helping us with those interior panels well, we got those all made we are moved on now to the carpet and you can see the bubba miss amanda in there cutting the carpet and getting her ready to go and man look at that carpet man that looks so good if we don't keep this car this makes make somebody a nice little car to run the cruise in The biggest part here is getting this cut. And you can see she's just using regular scissors and we're well, just kind of lining it up. And they are fabric scissors though. Yeah, they're, yeah, they are fabric scissors. I'm getting it cut. They're not scissors from the dollar store. No, they're not dollar store scissors. <laughs> Don't buy dollar stores. 
if you buy dollar store scissors, you get dollar store results. They're all cutting with a butter knife. Yeah. Especially when it comes to this carpet. You really want a good pair of shears. Nothing looks better than a fresh black carpet. Got those tow lights cleaned up too. And I mean, real glass. <laughs> Huge difference between real glass and plastic. All right, now it looks like that we have the carpet cut. So now we're just going to do a little fine tuning on it and glue her down and this carpet will be in. This was an easy, this was a very easy carpet, was it not? <laughs> Yeah, I will say it that it was time not was like the sixty. The sixty more, was yeah. a, the sixty was rough. Yeah. The Cadillac was about Cadillac like this. Was well, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like the sixty. The Cadillac was more like this where the floor pan's mostly flat. This the is sixty completely flat. Yeah. The sixty had these dips where this. the floor where your feet go. Feet. Yeah. And man that was that was rough. It was. Looking back though, I wish we'd put black carpet in the sixty. The gray carpet looks spot on great, but mm -hmm. I like black carpet, and you can see right here. It will make it look flawless. Yeah, it way. makes it look flawless when it's in there. I mean, look at that. It's gorgeous. And with that gray dash, it's going to look spot on. Now we've got that glue, we're working from the back forward, so we just basically glued in the back part mm -hmm. up to where the seats would, the backs of the seats would Are be. Are short? Yeah, just a hair. Is this too short? I'm going to move it over a little bit. Well, I can't tell me if you want it moved over. Yeah, we need to move it over just a hair. It moved over. you got to watch these grab gaps it, right grab here. Grab it corner. Grab it corner. You have a little window that you can play with this glue, and now you can get a good shot of that Stood glue. Over there. Line it up. Are you good? Yeah. Now work your tunnel down, Amanda, so he don't pull from his side. Yeah. There you go. There we go. I got. It. Are you yeah, good? it looks yeah. good now. Yeah. You have a little window that you can move this carpet around as you glue it. A little. A little window. <laughs> And if you're wondering, right here's what we're using. It's headliner glue. It's headliner glue. Yeah. Now let me tell you something about this. This is this glue is kindly expensive. About what, twenty dollars a can? Uh sixteen, but yes. Yeah, sixteen a can. But it's worth every penny. Once you glue this stuff in with this, it don't let free. We've never had an issue. This will be the third car we've used it in. And we've never Use it in yours. Oh yeah, yeah, because we used it in Bubba's Thunderbird. Okay. Yeah, so technically, four cars without an issue. Can't beat that, so, yeah. All right, let's get the rest of this carpet in. We'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. Well, we got that carpet in. And boy, does it ever look good. She did a really good job. She's good on this carpet. That plate is for the master cylinder because it is uh, under the frame on this car. As we went over in one of the previous videos. I've got a lot of wiring up here to take care of. But carpet is in. Back out here you can get kind of a, a full view of it. Yeah, looks great black always does good so now with that done where do we go now the seats yep and it still ain't decided what we're going to do with those whether we're going to dye them or just run them with the carpet looking as good as it does i hate to just run them i know but you also got to consider the budget i got to consider the budget i mean he's the one that made the budget boo boo so you know we may have to bust the budget you may have to bust the budget 
I mean, you can't have the pimping the interior seats, and jalopy seats. Yeah. I mean, you know. I tried to repair the seats. Not a whole lot to do there. They right. are what they are. They're held together by sandwich bag pipes and old wrapped up wiring out of a car from somewhere. And a lot of them are. Yeah. When you get these cars like this, actually, we're those seats are probably the best seats in any car we've ever drug in here. Yeah, I mean, they're really nice. Yeah, they're nice. Feel, but of course, the front seats are late model. Yeah. So the the back seats I tried, I don't know. Well, we're going to debate this. We're going to go eat some supper and get out of here because I'm just, you know, three days into this thing trying to finish it up now, and I, I was saying earlier. I may, we may have to split this video into two parts because it's going to get too long trying to finish this thing out. So, but, yeah. Let's go get some supper. <laughs> We're going to go eat. We're going to discuss these seats. And then we'll get back to you on that. All right, back at it. Last time you seen us put that carpet in. <clears throat> I'm back out here this afternoon now. After seeing that carpet look so good in there, the seats, you know, they were probably the best seats we ever got in a car, as far as, you know, not being deteriorated and just rotted away gone. Actually decent by that standard, but, and usable. No problem, no big tires, nothing like that. But, they're nasty, and the back seat is, the back seat is the roughest. Right here, I'll show you the back seat. The fabric is still on there, but it does have some issues and right here is the biggest issue see how this is torn away miss amanda can't fix that it's already been fixed a couple of times and it just can't be so i think that she is going to cover that seat to a certain degree the front seats however will die on I was talking about this before because I would rather dye these and try it out before I dye my Bronco seats. So I dyed those headrests this morning. And I know one thing. Boy, they look awful good. That dye, it looks good. Now I'm just using your standard dye from your auto parts store here. Got two cans. That was a leftover three quarter or half a can that I had on the shelf where we dyed some carpet. I've dyed carpet before with this stuff and it's worked out amazing. I've never dyed seats. I've seen people do it. So now we're trying it. And right here's what I'm using. Let me get y'all around here where you can see. Duple color, vinyl and fabric. Special coating. Special coating. Now this stuff is not supposed to be spray paint. It is actually supposed to be a dye. That's what they say. That's what I've seen said. But like I, you know, I think it looks good. And we're gonna try it and see, cause like I said, I'd rather mess these seats up than I would the ones in the Bronco, much harder to find. So I'll start up here on the top. Now I'll say this, this stuff covers decent. Uh, I'm pleased with the cover. Yeah, I'm pleased with the coverage. This stuff seems to go a fair ways. I don't know, it covers pretty good, but you can start to see as it dries a little bit, the blue bleed back, back through the black. So I don't think that one can will do it seat. I think you will probably, most likely, need two cans per seat, but we'll see. That 
And as you can see, I'm not putting it on sparingly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really using it. So I've got about a half a can. I've already got the back of the seat and around the side. This can will probably do the seat. I don't think it would give it two coats though. I don't know, it's gonna be close. I know one thing, it makes the seat look new again. I'm not impressed with the way this can sprays. This can won't be giving me trouble. It's wanting to blotch it, it don't want to come out smooth. Try to get plenty of coverage. Well, that's all of that can. So one can did one seat. It did not do two coats. It did one seat, one coat. I got two coats on the back, two coats on the armrest, so we'll see how it does. Let me get y'all in here and let you see it. I mean, it looks really good. Uh, will it stay this way? Well, only time will tell. But, yeah, it, the seat looks... Looks like a new seat. I'm very impressed. Uh... Will it stay? Who knows? We'll see. But now I'm going to get this other seat done and we'll go from there. Alright, got both of the seats dyed. I ain't going to lie. They look amazing. I mean, just they look good all over the place compared to what they did. But I guess that that seems to be the going theme, don't it, with this thing. Um, it looks anything looks better than it did uh, so we're going to continue with that thing <laughs> I mean I am really pleased with the way that this this old car is turning out I, I think it's turning out better than most people expected that it would so yeah here we are uh, still got a lot to do to finish it up though not going to be able to finish it. I was wanting to finish it in this, you know, do this on running video, um, but that's just not going to, it's not going to happen. Probably going to be two parts, maybe even three. Still a lot of work to get to. I'm going to knock out a bunch more in the morning though. I didn't get a real big chance to work on it today. I got this afternoon and was able to do the seats. Um, so, yeah, got that done anyway. Uh, tomorrow will be on the, you know, tackling some of the wire and up under that dash and putting that dash back together so pressing onward uh let's see what we can do and i'll be back in the morning now so when i come back it'll be the next morning hopefully extremely early i like to do things early and we'll see if we can't knock out that dash get it put back together and the wires fixed in there and go from there so i went ahead and started putting this dash back together all the chrome polishing it made this little piece right here to cover the ashtray i'm going to do something over on the end too and something with this radio hole got a little touch up paint on the choke knob but not going to finish it up right now right now i'm going to go ahead and jump on this engine and clean it up really good and this black is in pretty good condition so I think we'd get away with maybe some bull linseed oil on that and then cleaning out this motor compartment really good. I'm not going above and beyond with this car. I'm just going to uh, basically do a detail job on it. So here we go. I'll start with this valve cover. I'm going to wipe it down. I don't think I'm going to paint it. It's in pretty good shape. I think, I'm, I think it'll be okay with a good cleaning. So we'll start right there. So we're into it now. I had to uh, take cool off 
and fix that bracket. We just had that thing on there. I mean, just barely. That mounts right here on that bolt right there into the head. So I've got the bracket right here drying now after I had to bend it up a little bit and then give it a fresh coat of paint. And there's a cool, the swap meat cool I picked up for like five bucks a while back. When I find stuff like that, for that kind of money, I, I normally just pick it up and put it on a shelf because I figure I'll use it at some point anyway. But you can see we're getting the new plug wires on now. I've got four of them in. i got two to go, but I wanted to get that coil straightened out before I do those last two plug wires. Or at least reassemble everything. I'll go ahead and do the plug and wire, but then, you know, before I'm done, I'll put that coil on. But that's where we're at, and i got a couple of wires here I need to replace, like... I'll take you down in here and show you this one. Look at that off the distributor. Broken. Don't know where this one goes. Broken. We got some over here on the driver's side. That's skint. They've got to be repaired. And then we're going to clean up that gobbledygook get all that cleaned up make it look presentable and all that right there so it's going to rain today so it's going to be an engine kind of day i guess all right still on this motor you can see here i got my my plug wires all on now got my battery in had to make a little bracket there cleaned up uh, and uh, done our cool bracket. Run some new wires for the cool, new plugs. Looks good. Got our air cleaner on, cleaned up the wool cap. Starting to look pretty good under there. Now one thing this thing had an issue with when I drug it in here, the first thing I noticed right off the bat, the alternator was not in line. And when I say in line, I mean the belt was off. And in doing so, it cracked the alternator bracket um, here. But that's not the only issue. Right here is where they had the alternator mounted. They did not have a spacer in here. It's had a bolt right there. And then this. Well, the alternator where it was bolted right there runs around the water pump this belt was pulled like this out of line so we're going to have to rectify that problem there's the old alternator right there in the floor it's shot uh, aside from that when I first started this engine up the alternator immediately started smoking wires so i don't i didn't look too much into it so i don't know if it was hooked up wrong or the alternator dead to short something there but i figured well i don't need to worry about it then because i knew i was going to go here with it now we got it in here now we've got to worry about it so i'm gonna take the alternator up to our local alternator shop let him check it out fix it whatever's wrong with it make it a one wire number one one wire alternator can't say enough good things about them he'll make that one a one wire as far as the bracket we need to somehow devise a bottom bracket down there to shift that alternator forward about i'm gonna guess and say half inch at least so yeah don't know how I'm going to do that just yet, but I'm thinking about it. So, it looks really good. I'm really pleased with the way that the dash in this car turned out, because this thing was rough. I mean, still waiting on the glass, too. Yeah, this, this thing's going to drag on for at least another probably two weeks 
before I can get it, like, actually get it out driving it. But, you know, it's easy little fine details like some of the stuff on the dash and things like that that took me a while, but I went ahead and made because sometimes the devil's in the details and that, you know, will put a car over the top. So, well, that's where we're at and getting done is where we're going and I'm gonna get this bracket and start on that in the next day or so, the weekend, and get that alternator straightened out and that should be it for the motor. And yeah, we're right on our way. So, I'm gonna have to break this video up because it's spanned over like three, about three, four days. So we'll probably break this up into segments, but be looking for that, um, yeah, going forward.